three 2013 free ride uh, 137s with two and a quarter track for the North Shore Hardcore Eat Moose Meat crew. <laughs> So today we're going to do the water trick uh, because we forgot the puller at my buddy's place. We're putting in on a clutch kit over there. Uh, so have a look here. This is what we see seen on Dew Talk. Remember the Teflon tape to wrap the threads around? And the idea of this is that when we go to pour water in the clutch hole, that this is going to compress the center threads or this is going to thread into the center threads and compress the water, expand the chamber, and the clutch ideally should pop off. It works pretty good. We got the bolt in pretty good there and I think we'll be able to pop it off if it doesn't come off this first time and we can always oh look at that <laughs> I'll charge. bet you I didn't even put 10 pounds on that okay <laughs> so here we have some hammers for TRE3 clutches or TRE2 but uh, these aren't really big enough so I made this, got, got this one special <laughs> because these four, five, and seven clutches, oh, they're pretty tough to take apart some days. As you can see by the head of the puller, it's kind of smashed. Actually, this is from hitting the sidewalk with the clutch upside down. So, you see the amount of threads on there. We can go in about 10, 12 turns. A little bit tight, probably because of the Teflon tape left over. Oh, safety glasses. Safety glasses. <laughs> because uh, you don't want any material coming off. That was the easy one. <laughs> Sometimes what we have to do, maybe we'll go show you over there. So the reason these dents are like this is because a few of the primary clutches I've had are pretty tough to split apart. I've literally had to use the shop floor or the sidewalk outside of my office. So when they don't break apart, don't be shy to give her a lot of effort. I mean, you got to do lift it up a lot to uh, split that apart well that's the way it goes that's the only way that thing's coming apart so on these new e-tech clutches the e-tech engines uh, the 2012-13 are different than the 11 so if you want to have a look here at the timing mark the new engines have this either a paint well I see this one's identified by paint but if you can't see, if there is no paint, then there's a little circle here stamped to identify the phase mark to back up to the clutch here. This mark here on the clutch. So there could be paint markers on the clutch and disregard those because I believe from what I know about balancing that those could be a balance. They could help the guys in the balance shop to uh, correct the phase balance so you're gonna align this to that crank stub so here it is right here where my thumb is ideally that's where it's gonna go on the crankshaft right beautiful okay. remember this is the TRE 7 oh this is a fairly tight one so what you can do is
still kind of new, still tight, eh? Yeah. Well, some of them are pretty loose, especially the old ones uh, back in <laughs> 2007, if everybody remembers those summit of clutches. <laughs> We're going to use our forks. when I was talking about the balance shop. So this is a brand new clutch. It's only ever been run from the, basically the dealer onto the, onto the sled, uh, sled trailer. So you can see these paint markings in here. From what I know of balancing, that they probably use these to identify a position in the machine when they went to go balance this. So You'll see this and I get a lot of questions. What the heck is this thing, Joe? Should I take that out? No, don't take that out. That is in there for a reason. That is to make sure that this thing Let's get some light on that, is Joe. balanced. Okay. There you go. How's that? Yep. So there could be one, two, three. There could be none. I just did a clutch on Sunday that uh, last week that had none in it. So leave these alone. Don't move them. I don't know if you can see it. You see that little thing in there, that spacer? Oh uh, yeah, it's flopping around. Yeah, that's in there for a reason. So some people wonder, should I take this out? No, don't take it out. What that spacer does, come a little closer. See how nice and shiny this surface is? And this surface is, it's untouched, undamaged. Well, that spacer, so now you're, now you're getting Faster speeds, faster, faster to top end, full shift overdrive. Well, those surfaces meet together and because the sheaves are always out of parallel somewhat because there's pushing clearance, <laughs> uh, what happens is the surfaces meet together and you get that galling. So you will see metal falling around here and the material, the surface will get damaged so leave that spacer in. Some people don't have it in the clutch. If it's not in there and you're concerned about that, well, you could just go and buy one and put it in. It doesn't take long to do it and it'll help prolong your clutch material. Okay, so this is the CT Power Sports Rev XP Clutch Maintenance Toolkit. And today for this particular clutch, uh, I like to use the spacer from the secondary clutch tool to, because it's plastic, kind of won't, you know, hurt the surface. And uh, so finally we're using Chris's tools, because <laughs> I didn't forget them this time. So I like to use the trusty grunt tool to help take the spring cover fasteners off. Makes it easier to hold the clutch, especially when you go to torque the fasteners back down. Well, we took we took the fasteners out, and now we're going to change the primary spring. Okay, we have uh, the tool off. We're going to get ready to change the primary spring. Oh, look at that! I never seen one that wouldn't come out before. And that's, you know what, that's fine. Uh, if in the future that you're going to need a new one of these uh, spring covers, well then obviously you're gonna have to get this out and uh, press it in the new cup. However, I bet you though, after a bunch of running this, this is gonna end up getting loose. And the reason why is because this primary spring, actually what it does, goes like this while it's being compressed. So it's a good idea to leave, people take this out. Really, you should leave it in. Because what happens is, the spring breaks because it works hard, work hardens. So it's just like taking a piece of metal and bending it back and forth and eventually there's a point where the material 
compresses and gets hard and snaps. So that's what happens to a clutch spring. You compress it, right? You're shifting. Full shift, back, back shift, full shift, back shift, right? The spring is compressing all the time. So two things are happening. The spring coil is bending like that, but also it, it's going, it's displacing back and forth this way, this way, like that. And that's what this spring cover prevents. The work hardening of a spring to break.